Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. I know it's been a little while, I apologize, but I've been very, very busy. So if you guys remember back in April, I bought the 1990 Gambler 206. So we've got a 30 year old bass boat and it ran perfectly fine. It didn't look too bad. And the last time you saw it, it probably looked something like this. Structurally, boat's good. Cosmetically, definitely needs some love. So as the fishing has gotten tougher, I decided that this year I'm gonna try and restore this boat. This is something that I have very little experience in, actually none, but I figured with the help of YouTube and a little bit of time, I might be able to bring this thing back to life. So in this video, we're gonna go over what I've done and the progress that I've made so far and some of the techniques I've used to do so. And then we'll talk about some of the plans that I have for the future and how I can bring this boat back and potentially get it looking thumbs up again. All right, let's go take a look at this thing. We're gonna start going over some stuff. Oh, I'm gonna talk about this too. All right, before we get into taking a look at this boat, I wanna thank AnglerAid for sponsoring today's video. So this is a pretty shocking statistic, but I just read that 24,000 people a year die while they're fishing. That's absolutely insane. And as most of you guys know, if you spend any time out on the water, bad things do happen. The more you're out, the higher your chances are of something going unfortunately wrong. So AnglerAid has created a box of necessities to have for these unfortunate circumstances. Whether you cut your hand open or get a hook in you, you get stranded out on the water or any other unforeseen circumstances. This is basically the number one first aid kit that you can have in your boat. And again, it's for those situations where, you know, you hopefully will never need this. But if you put this in your box or, you know, with your tackle hidden somewhere in the boat, it's a nice safety measure to have without a doubt. Like this is going to be the first thing that goes into this boat and it's going to stay in this boat. So in this kit, first of all, this is a waterproof box. It comes with angler aid spray, tactical flashlight, multi-tool, emergency blanket, 550 paracord, carabiners, light stick, cold pack, fire starters, wire saw, and quite a bit more in here as well. This thing is a lot more full than what I just read. I mean, Unbelievable amount of stuff in here. Plenty of band-aids, gloves, emergency foil blanket. You've got that angler aid spray I talked about. Glow sticks, zip ties, paracord, a thermometer if you feel like you're starting to get a little sick out on the boat. There is so much stuff packed into this box. And just having the peace of mind, knowing that you pretty much have everything covered to be able to take up any situation that you might run into out on the water. It's nice having that. And it's in a small compact box too. I mean, it's barely bigger than your normal 3700 Plano box. So I think this is a really great product. If you guys wanna check this out, make sure you click the link down in the description below. It'll take you over to Amazon where you can purchase it. Huge thanks again to AnglerAid for sponsoring this video. And I really look forward to having this in the boat. Let's take a look at this mess. About a month and a half trying to get this thing looking like this, which I'm sure a lot of you probably don't see too much progress here. But again, having no experience, I didn't know what chemicals to use to get some of the glue off the floor, what tools to use to get the glue off the floor. Um, I spent days removing a bunch of the clear coat that was on the inside of the boat. And honestly, the best way that I found to do it was just with a somewhat dull razor blade. Just keep it in your fingers and uh, scrape away, but try not to get into the glass too much. I removed a ton of the hardware. I sanded down the decks to the bare fiberglass. I also sanded the lids down to the bare aluminum. And all of this is just kind of in prep for the new sea deck that's gonna go onto this boat. So before it had hydro turf on here with like half inch thick foam. So like the gym matting kind of puzzle piece kind of foam stuff. That's what was underneath the hydro turf. So I get it, it was put under there to add a little bit more cushion, but it also raised the hydro turf. So it never really looked seamless at all. There were all these little gaps and then it was like filled in with black caulk and it was just a mess. That alone probably took me a week just of getting all of the hydro turf and all of this foam 
off of the decks and the lids for the entire boat. And, you know, I still have like small pieces of it here and there that I need to come through and clean up, but everything that needs to be done to make the next steps are in place. So I'm happy with it. Being that this is a 30 year old boat, I figured that I would run into some surprises as I was tearing it up and I did for sure. I mean, this front deck you can see has been redone. Like this is all fiberglass. There's a little bit of glue residue still on the edges, but I wasn't 100% sure how far into that fiberglass I could go. And I just kind of left it for now. I still think it'll be fine. Like I've sanded it all down, it's pretty flat, but there's still some cracked areas that I need to go through and clean up a little bit. Now, as far as removing the glue from the deck itself, I used a little bit of everything. I tried doing a wire brush, like the wheel, on a drill. It worked fine. It actually probably worked the best out of anything. And then I got an orbital sander and that did pretty decent work as well. I tried spraying so many different things onto the glue to help lift it a little bit or loosen it up. Aircraft remover, goof off, acetone, some crazy mixture of a, a bunch of different chemicals that I read online from some guy. Luckily, nothing bad happened, but nothing was easy. I can say that like it is just tedious work most everything that i've done so far is just tedious tedious work nothing has been easy but it's been a good learning experience it's been a lot of fun and it's cool to see things kind of slowly starting to move along now as far as the aluminum lids go and i had to sand these down to the bare aluminum because i'm going to be putting the sea deck just on the surface that was the another thing about the hydro turf before is that the previous owner had wrapped the hydro turf around the lids like you would carpet and that covered up the edges of the lids which was great but again it gave it this real poofy look and like just way too big so i needed to sand these lids down past the glue like to the bare aluminum so i can go ahead and paint them because when i lay the sea deck on top i don't want to see just bare aluminum around the edges the deck in its entirety was pretty tedious the lids were way, way, way more intense. They took three days to get them all sanded down. And again, I might not be using the best equipment that I can be. I'm just using what I have and what I can get access to. So when I started removing the hydro turf from these lids, basically I used my bare hands just to try to rip and pull as much of it as I could up. And I would probably get half of it maybe and there were just so many little spots where there was no chance i could pull it up you know you got 30 year old glue and then on top of that you got fresh glue when they put the foam and the hydro turf down it was quite the mess i found that an oscillating tool worked really well to kind of cut underneath the foam just so you could get to the glue so make a pass with that all the way through so there was no hydro turf on the lid itself and then from there i would try spraying goof off for the aircraft remover actually i found that the aircraft remover worked a little bit better than the goof off with this specific glue that was on here and again it could have been a mixture of two different glues it's an old boat with multiple owners so i have no idea it might have been four different kinds of glue i really don't know but the aircraft remover worked best spray it on leave it on there for like 30 minutes sometimes less and then come out and start with the wire wheel and the wire wheel definitely did the best amount of work like just for removing it from there i'd grab the orbital sander with 80 grit and run down until there was pretty much no glue left on it at all and again there's one two three four five six seven eight lids in the boat that i had to do and each one took probably two hours and that's probably something else i should mention when i bought this boat i initially knew that it needed some work and like i could have kept riding it wouldn't have hurt anybody, but it's always been an interest to me to try to restore a boat. I don't know why. It's just always been something I've wanted to do. I've probably spent over, well over a hundred hours at this point, just getting it here. And again, to a lot of you, it's not gonna look like a lot of progress, but I'm happy with it and I'm learning. Let's keep moving around. The floor with the seat, took the seat out. You can see I've already made a slight mistake there. Ripped out one of the live well fittings. This whole live well situation, it was rigged up and plumbed like very strange. I don't understand. So you've got two live well pumps in the back which pump in the fresh water. And those two live well fills are coming from the back of the boat in the bilge all the way up 
to the top side of the live well. You can see it right here. So that's the fill. Then you have your recirculating pump, which is right here. And that's gonna recirculate the water when you close off the valve. So, you know, you get your fish in there. If it's hot out, you throw some ice in, put your chemicals in there to keep the fish alive. And then you're gonna run your aerator all day. For whatever reason, this setup was rigged with a third hole and it came out of here, which connected over to this pump. This pump is fed through this, pardon my mess. You can see it has like this crazy loop system that goes through here. That runs down to this little T valve and these run up into the live well as a second aerator. I really don't get it. So basically it was being double aerated, I guess, but this was never hooked up. Like when I bought the boat, it was just sitting exactly how it is. The wires wrapped up, it didn't work. So I have no idea really why they did it this way. I mean, I guess that way you can run and aerate both live wells off of one pump and maybe it's like a backup, but I'm not 100% sure, but I've got to figure out exactly what I want to do there and kind of clean this whole back area up in general. Looks a little questionable, but that's later down the line. Another big issue this boat had was the wiring. Maybe 25, 30% of it worked. There were a ton of just random wires in this boat. There were two wiring harnesses, one to an old motor before it was repowered, and then one for this motor. They were both somehow tied into each other. It was a complete mess, and I decided, screw it, I'm just gonna redo all of the electrical in this boat. Now the wiring harness, I'm gonna keep and just try to clean that up because I feel like that'll probably be easiest for me. But as far as all the live well pumps, which there are six or seven, the lights, the electronics, everything else, I'm gonna run new wire for. I'm gonna try to keep it as clean as possible. I'm also gonna try to make my own switch panel with these really cool little flush buttons and obviously redo the entire console here. First thing with the console I'm gonna have to do is fix these two cracks here. You can see it makes it pretty flimsy. It goes probably halfway down into the wood there. So I'm thinking I might make some sort of aluminum plate for the back because I did grab a piece of angled aluminum and put it just along this bottom bar and it makes it completely solid. So if I'm able to fasten that on each side, I think it'll be perfectly fine. I might even go through and try to re-glass it, but I, I don't know. This is kind of my daily conundrum. I'm like, what do I need to do? I don't know what's the best route. And I don't necessarily want to always take the easiest route. You know, I don't mind trying to lay some fiberglass over this and learn how to do it. I really think the aluminum would probably be just a better overall fix. But if you guys have any suggestions for me so far, uh, please leave them down in the comments. I'm hoping to have like couple hundred comments that I can read with suggestions so I have a little bit of direction but that's step number one for here the next couple things I'll do will be to probably clean up underneath you can see that this bit of floor under the console has been removed so I have noticed on looking through a bunch of different pictures of older gamblers is a lot of them came with a secondary box here under the console and they mounted two foot trim switches on there so you had up and down trim on your left foot it might have originally been in this boat and then was removed but that just makes for that whole area down there to look not so great so i'm gonna have to figure something out whether that's lay like a quarter inch piece of plywood and then glass over that and then sand i'm not 100 percent sure i'm also gonna have to go through and kind of clean up underneath and on this gunnel that's underneath the boat I would like to lay a little bit of the sea deck down there and I know it's like so minimal but when you're walking around the boat you can see it. I would like the entire boat just to look clean. That's it. I'm also going to see if I can make dash panel for obviously right here behind the steering wheel and then for the switchboard that's going to go here. There's just so many options of things that I can do and want to do and I'm not trying to go way overboard with it. Once we get all of that settled up, I would like to switch from dual cable steering to hydraulic steering if I can do that, and maybe a hydraulic jack plate as well, but 
we'll see. What I'm working on right now is basically just taking this front deck, looking all over it for any sort of little cracks or holes from, again, old electronic rigging or whatever people had screwed into this deck, and I'm trying to fill them. And I've been using epoxy putty for that. I'm basically just trying to seal the deck. That is one thing I noticed if I got caught out in the rain or something like that, that the storage compartments, rod locker, storage, whatever, they're still getting wet. As I was uh, removing a bunch of the hardware from the boat, it had rod buckles on here, which I'm a big fan of. I love these rod buckles, but they were basically in the middle of the wall. So if I'm fishing and my reels are up here towards the trolling motor and facing back, the rod buckle is two thirds of the way up the rod. So if you start hitting wakes or anything like that, it's not really gonna hold them down and the rods would end up bouncing around. So I figured I would move those up towards the front a bit. I also got a concealed kit for it that turns this massive face plate into a tiny little hole where it's just the tab for the rod buckle that's coming out. So I went ahead and tried to start filling these holes in. And this was a full marine text job. Uh, the first time I did it, it didn't turn out too well. Once I sanded it down, it had quite a bit of holes and I think that it was the way that I mixed it. I just didn't mix it properly and it had some air bubbles in there and it was also kind of cold outside. That's another thing, like working on all this stuff in the cold. I mean, it's not bad out right now, it's like 60, but I have been working out here in 40 and 50 degree days. A lot of these chemicals or paints or epoxies, they like to be a little bit warmer than that. And things just don't set up properly. And it's a whole mess. But this piece actually did turn out decent. Now I just need to figure out <laughs> what kind of paint to put over it because again, with kind of the theme of this build, I have no experience. I want to experiment and try different things. So yes, I used auto paint on the one up there. I'm going to see if I can use something different that's going to go over top of this marine tex. And I know I shouldn't use gel coat. They recommend not to use gel coat, but I don't know if you guys have any suggestions. I need to try some sort of different paint. My next option I believe that I'd like to try is the Rust-Oleum topside. I think that's what's recommended. So I'm gonna go with that, see how that looks, see if I can blend it well, and we'll go from there. Besides finishing and kind of sealing off the front deck, I've got to continue moving back. I would like to reupholster the seat, even though it's not in bad shape. I just want to go with a different color and style than it looks like now. Definitely keeping the bench seat, but just need to reupholster it a different color to match everything else that's going to be going into the boat. So I am a little intimidated by that. I think reupholstering a seat might be a little bit difficult, but we're going to try it. I'm going to try to do as much of this myself as I can so I can learn and share with you guys. It should be pretty fun, but I've got to replace live wells, run the electrical, redo the console. The whole back deck area is pretty solid and good to go. Need to fill in a couple holes back there. Besides that, I think we're pretty much done. Like it's only going to take me like 14 more years to get it up and running. Well, that's where I'm going to leave you guys off. I really hope you enjoyed this little update on the gambler and the restoration progress that I've done so far. If you have any comments for me, please leave them down below. Definitely looking forward to any suggestions, tips, whatever you got. Hate, I don't care. Leave it down there. If you guys want to see some more progress updates or more videos in general on different repairs that I'm making on this boat, please leave a thumbs up on the video. And let me know down below. Again, I have very little experience, but it's a learning experience so should be fun and i'm very happy to share that with you guys whether that's successful or not so i hope you guys tag along make sure you hit that subscribe button for me and we'll see you on the next one